hands. Father, I can hardly believe that, that we as, as mere creatures can talk to you, the Almighty, the loving creator of heaven and earth, a transcendent and holy God who cannot be in the presence of sin, and yet, Lord, I'm filled with it. I'm, f I'm filled with the selfishness and the pride that, that separated me from you, but you've paid the price. You came to this world and you solved my sin problem. I don't need to sacrifice, and in fact, I, I, I can't possibly sacrifice and, 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 and make up for the wrongs that I've done. You've already sacrificed for me and for all those who put their faith in you so that we could know you and, and, and have the blessing of, of being adopted into your family. We love you. Thank you for being our Father. We ask for your guidance tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I uh, wanted to talk with you a, a little bit, uh, first of all, about last night. What, what, a, what a fun uh, time I had talking with you, and I completely forgot about the frog. <laughs> And I know some of you were freaking out and I didn't realize that until I was reading your comments later. But some of you were genuinely concerned that I was, I was boiling a frog on our campfire. Well, listen, I, I want you to know that uh, no frogs were hurt in the filming of that video. In fact, I've got my little frog right here. In fact, uh, I'll show him to you. He's just a piece of wood. That's all he was. That's all it was. It was just an illustration. So uh, no, no, no frogs were harmed. In, in, in that video. And I, and I also talked about castration, of all things. Well, I talked about taxation is castration. And I, and I trust that you know what I mean when I said that, because it's true. You know, you, you take, uh, what incentive does a man have to work uh, when everything that he works for is taken away, or the majority of it is taken away and used for purposes against that which he believes? And, and he doesn't have enough to provide for his own family. And, and help his, his friends and his neighbors, right? All, I mean, you just, you feel like you, you, a, a, a weakling without power, without will, without strength and drive, effectively um, he's been stripped of, of, of all that he needs to be able to be the man that God's called him to be. So I have a friend, uh, I mentioned to him before, his name's Jay Yance, and he's probably watching here right now. And uh, he challenged me a little bit on that uh, talk about taxation. And he said, but Jesus said that it is appropriate for the government to require taxes. After all, Jesus said when he was asked, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus said, render under Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. And so absolutely, that's right. I am not against paying taxes. And it's great when our taxes are used for building roads and bridges and aircraft carriers and providing clean water. Those things are great. But when it goes too far and historically governments begin to grab more and more power and more of your property and more of your money in the form of taxes, that's when it becomes problematic and you lose your strength, you lose your ability to provide for your family. And then he becomes your dad and then the government becomes your daddy. The government becomes your provider, your protector, because you can't provide and protect anymore. It's all been, all your strength's been taken away from you in the form of taxes. That's the idea. And I trust you, uh, you know exactly what I'm saying. Um, but he had some great challenges for me. Um, also, uh, Dr. Marshall Foster, who wrote the American Covenant book that we've been going through, uh, we're now up to day 43 in our 100-day plan, he said, you know, President James Madison also had a very important idea about property. And last night we talked about this question, who owns your property? Is it you? Is it God? Or is it the government? And we talked about our money being our property because that's what we... Uh, um, it's what we've earned. It's what we own. Our land, we have our physical property, but there's another very special property we've begin, been given, and that is our conscience. Our conscience, which is our internal property. Conscience comes from two words, con and science. Con means with, science means knowledge. And so you and I have been given 
a special knowledge from God informed by his word in the Bible, and we can make decisions morally and ethically with knowledge that it is right and true and noble and good. And historically, those who love to uh, acquire power, government, force, love to be able to also steal away the people's internal property, which is their conscience. Because if they can steal away from you that precious, valuable knowledge of what is right and moral and good, i.e. if they can say, don't listen to what you think about the value of stuff you know is right, like protecting life in the womb, no, no, don't, don't think about that. No, in fact, we're going to steal that away from you. We're going to tell you that you're wrong. We're going to tell you that you are, are, uh, you're, you're, you're hateful. We're going to say that you're a bigot. We're going to say that, that you are upside down, backwards, and Neanderthal. And if they can steal away your conscience, your God-given knowledge of what is right morally and ethically, and then more than that, can actually then take your money to pay for the very things that you know are wrong, then you lose that internal strength, that internal strength of, of character and conviction and, and resolve to fight for what is good and right and noble and true. And if they can take that away from you, the internal property of your conscience, it becomes much, much easier for them to then simply just snatch away your external properties, your money and your land, because in time, inside you've already been gutted. You, 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 you've already been turned, you, you, you've been turned into a eunuch already, if they can steal your internal property as well. And the same goes with, with education. Um, Jay had, had pointed out to me that he, he said this, he said, family used to be responsible for their children's education. Now that doesn't mean everybody had school inside of their home. Uh, there, there was one such a thing as public schools where you had a local schoolhouse and everybody would pitch in and you'd, you'd, you'd send your kids to a schoolhouse, but you knew what was being teached and some of the parents would be teachers. This is a lot like modern day homeschooling where y you have parent-led education. But slowly we've been heated in the water of government schools, government education, and our collective brains have been boiled so people believe what the elite government educators tell us to think rather than what God and the Bible tell us to think. Right? Collectively, we're like that frog that I had in the, in the, in the, in the water and slowly over the last 40, 50 years, they've told us that there is no God, that we're just an accident. We're the result of a, of a cosmic explosion and a process of random chance and time and survival of the fittest. And it's a process that never had you in mind. Ultimately, you have no, no transcendent meaning. You have no uh, uh, eternal value. And that ultimately guts morality and truth as meaningless. And therefore, your identity can just basically, be, you can make it up, whatever you want. No wonder we're in the mess that we're in today. Rather than telling us to think precisely what God thinks and what he tells us to think in his word and how to live in his world. That's what we need to get back to. This is the way that our forefathers and our foremothers uh, thought and the way that they, they, they taught their kids. This also uh, applies to the history that we've been learning. J Jay said this, he said, when history becomes man's story, when history, hear that again, when history becomes all about man's story and what man has done and what man is doing, where, where he is going and, 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 and man is the hero, instead of God's story, his story, history, his is his story and what he's doing and who he is and what he is accomplishing. And he is allowing us to be a part of what he is accomplishing. 
when we throw that out and replace history with being all about man's story, that's when people pick and choose the so-called facts of history to fit their own agenda. Boy, that sure happened, right? The rewriting of history. Boy, this is just, we can experience this in our own lifetime. Just look at last year, 2020. Can you think of how people have made t the story of 2020 all about man and what he's doing rather than, or a man and what he's doing rather than what, who God is and what he's been doing? And then cherry picking the facts and, and bits and pieces of the truth and half truths and exaggerations of the truth in order to fit their own political agenda and narrative? Wow. If, if that's not the truth. History has got to be about God's story and what he's doing and what he's showing us and what he's accomplishing. And he's doing it in our lifetime. And when we, we blindly bow down and we obey those who deny the absolute truth of God's word, who never lies, and they substitute it for the absolute rule of a man-centered, godless philosophy, that's when we have problems. Big problems. Problems when we ignore God and we put corporate man on the throne and say government is the absolute authority. We are to submit to the authorities that God has put in place and that's why it's so what a blessing it is that in our country, in the United States of America, we get to choose our leaders and those in authority. And even better than that, we don't ever have a king of America. We are the kings. That's what citizens means, co-kings. The ultimate authority in the United States is we the people. The first three words in the Constitution and we voluntarily submit to the highest law of the land, which is that constitution. And that itself is subjugated to the Judeo-Christian principles in the word of God, the law of God. And that's what has been the source of our blessing and our freedom. And we cannot change that framework. We cannot change that foundation. If we do, we'll lose everything. And I firmly believe, brothers and sisters, it's up to the family of faith to rebuild the foundation, to repair the breach in the wall, to repave the, the paths that lead us to our future and our hope. And God goes before us and he is with us and he's watching our back. And what he is looking for, I believe, as I read in the Bible and I see throughout history, is people who are willing to humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek him with all of their heart. And then he will, will respond in mercy and power and forgive us our sins, hear our prayers, and heal our land. I love these campfire revivals. I love your comments. I'm so happy so many of you have been receiving. Uh, a lot of you said you got your hoodie and uh, somebody said that, uh, so I think you were in the gym and somebody had stopped you and said, what's that all about? And you, you, you told them all about the American campfire revival and you said that you pointed them to the, the Facebook page and now they're watching it. Somebody else told me that, that uh, they have a brother, he's 46 years old, he walked away from the Lord, he came back and he's been, he's been watching and learning and praying with us and reading your comments and the way that you care for for one another and love one another and he went and ordered one of the sweatshirts that says what's your plan and he's all in and she said his soul has been saved how great is that god is using something as crazy as as as, as our 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 time together to make a difference for eternity and in the lives and in the futures of human beings and I just want it to spread. 
So God bless you for what you're doing. God bless you for uh, spreading the word, for starting conversations, doing whatever it takes. And um, just really honored to be with you tonight. Thanks for joining me. God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow night.